ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो वी विल बिगिन अ रीडिंग फ्रॉम वर्स नंबर 102 ऑफ चैप्टर 19 ऑफ द मध्यलीला ऑफ श्री चैतन्य चरितामृत मुखम करोति वाचलम पद्मम लंघयते गिरिम यत कृपा तमम वंदे श्री गुरुम दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम हरि ओम तत्सम श्याम रूपेर वासस्थान श्रेष्ठ मान काय पुरी मधुपुरी वारा कहे उपाध्याय ऑफ ऑल कृष्णा जबोर्ड्स विच डू यू थिंक इज द बेस्ट पर्पट बाय शिला भक्ति वेदांत स्वयं प्रभुपात प्रभुपात की जय रघुपति उपाध्याय सेड मधुपुरी और मथुरा धाम इज सर्टनली द बेस्ट लॉर्ड कृष्णा हैज मेनी फॉर्म्स एज स्टेटेड इन द ब्रह्म संहिता फाइव अद्वैतम अच्युतम अनादिम अनंत रूपम श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु आस्ट रघुपति उपाध्याय विच फॉर्म वॉज द बेस्ट ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्णा मिलियंस ऑफ फॉर्म्स एंड ही इमीडिएटली रिप्लाइड दैट द सुप्रीम फॉर्म वॉज द श्याम सुंदर फॉर्म इन दैट फॉर्म कृष्ण स्टैंड कर्व्ड इन थ्री प्लेसेज एंड होल्ड्स इज फ्लूट द श्याम सुंदर फॉर्म इज ऑल्सो डिस्क्राइब इन द ब्रह्म संहिता फाइव पॉइंट थ्री एट प्रेमांजना चुरिता भक्ति विलोचनेना संत सदैव हृदयु विलोकयती यम श्याम सुंदरम अचिंत्य गुण स्वरूपम गोविंद मादि पुरुषम तम अहम भजामी अवर्षिप द प्राइमी व लॉर्ड गोविंद हु इज ऑलवेज सीन बाय द डिवोटीज हुज आईज आर अनॉइंटेड विद द पल्प ऑफ लव ही इज सीन इन इज इटर्नल फॉर्म ऑफ श्याम सुंदर सिचुएटेड विद इन द हार्ट ऑफ द डिवोटी दोज हु आर फिल्ड विद एक्सटैटिक लव फॉर कृष्णा ऑलवेज सी द फॉर्म ऑफ श्याम सुंदर विद इन द हार्ट्स Raghupati Upadhyay confirms that the absolute truth the supreme personality of Godhead has many incarnations Narayan Narsimha Varaha and others Varaha and others but Krishna is distinguished as the supermost according to Shrimad Bhagavatam first canto third chapter verse 28 Krishna stu bhagwan swayam Krishna is the original personality of Godhead Krishna means Shyam Sundar one who plays his plays his flute in vrindavan of all forms this form is the best of all krishna lives sometimes in mathura and sometimes in dwarka but mathura is considered the better place this is also confirmed by rupa goswami in his upadesh amrita 9 vaikunthaj janito vara madhupuri madhupuri or mathura is far superior to the vaikunth lokas in the spiritual world so the original name seems like for mathura is madhupuri वर्ष नंबर हंड्रेड एंड थ्री बाल्य पौगंड कैशोर श्रेष्ठ मान काय अव्य कैशोरक ध्येय कहे उपाध्याय श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु आस्ट ऑफ द थ्री एजेस ऑफ कृष्ण नोन एज चाइल्डहुड बॉयहुड एंड द फ्रेश यूथ विच डू यू कंसिडर बेस्ट परपट रघुपति उपाध्याय रिप्लाइड फ्रेश यूथ इज द बेस्ट एज एंड वी ऑल नो that all the faculties of a person are perfect in the youth verse 104 rasagana madhye tumi shreshtha man kay adya eva paro rasah kahe upadhyay when shri chaitanya mahaprabhu asked among all the mellows which do you consider best purpur ragupati upadhyay replied the mellow of conjugal love is supermost वर्ष 105 प्रभु कहे भाल तत्व शिखाइला मोरे एटा बली श्लोक पढ़े गदगद स्वरे श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु देन सेड यू हैव सर्टनली गिवन फर्स्ट क्लास कंक्लूजन्स आफ्टर सेइंग दिस ही बिगैन टू रिसाइड द फुल वर्स इन अ फॉल्टरिंग वॉइस वर्स 106 श्याम एव परम रूपम पुरी मधुपुरी वरा वय कैशोरक ध्येय आद्य एव परो रस द फॉर्म ऑफ श्याम सुंदर इज द सुप्रीम फॉर्म द सिटी ऑफ मथुरा इज द सुप्रीम अबोर्ड लॉर्ड कृष्णस फ्रेश यूथ शुड ऑलवेज बी मेडिटेटेड अपॉन एंड द मेलो ऑफ कॉन्जुगल लव इज द सुप्रीम मेलो दिस वर्स इज फाउंड इन द पद्यावली एटी टू सो दिस वॉज दिस लाइन वॉज द पर्पट एंड को इंसिडेंटली दिस मॉर्निंग वेन आई वॉज चेंजिंग द कैलेंडर शीट uh you know the daily calendar where there is a one nice quotation and this was the quotation from propad on today 
17th of January, where it said that Krishna, with flute in his hand, is considered to be higher than the one the Krishna in the Kula of Prindavan by the devotees. Verse 107. Prema Veshe Prabhu Tanre Kaila Alingana Prema Matta Hena Tenho Karena Nartan. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then embraced Raghupati Upadhyay in ecstatic love. Raghupati Upadhyay also was overwhelmed by love and he began to dance. Verse 108. Dekhi Valla Bhatta Mane Chamatkar Haila Dui Putra Ani Prabhura Charane Padila. Valla Bhattachare was struck with wonder to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Raghupati Upadhyay danced. He even brought forward his two sons and made them fall down at the Lord's lotus feet. Purport, the two sons of Vallabhacharya were Gopinath and Vitaleshwar. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited Prayag in the year 1434 or 1435, Shakabda era AD 1512 or 1513, Vitaleshwar was not yet born. In this regard, one should see Madhilila 18.47. Verse 109 Prabhu Deki Bare Gramera Sab Lok Aila Prabhu Darshane Save Krishna Bhakta Haila. Upon hearing that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had arrived, all the villagers went to see him. Simply by seeing him, they all became devotees of Krishna. Verse 110 Brahmana Sakala Karena Prabhu Nimantrana Vallabh Bhatta Tan Sabare Karena Nivarana. All the Brahmins of the village were eager to attend invitations to the Lord were eager to extend invitations to the Lord, but Vallabh Bhattacharya forbade them to do so. Verse 111 Premon Made Pare Gosani Madhe Yamunate Prayage Chalaiba Ihan Na Diba Rahite Vallabh Bhatt then decided not to keep Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Adaila because the Lord had jumped into the river Yamuna in ecstatic love. Therefore, he decided to bring him to Prayag. Verse 112. Yanbra Icha Prayage Yan Karibe Nimantrana Eta Bali Prabhu Lena Karila Kamana. Vallabhat said, If anyone likes, he can go to Prayag and extend invitations to Lord. In this way, he took the Lord with him and departed for Prayag. Verse 113. Ganga Pathe Mahaprabhure Nokate Vasana Vasane. Vasana Prayage Aila Bhatt Gosani Re Lena. Vala Bhattacharya avoided the river Yamuna. Putting the Lord on a boat in the river Ganges, he went with him to Prayag. Verse 114. Loka Bhida Bhai Prabhu Dashava Medhe Yana. Rupa Gosani Re Shiksha Kara Nashakti Sanchariya. Due to the great car crowds in Prayag, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to a place called Dashomed Ghat. It was there that the Lord instructed Sri Rupa Goswami and empowered him in the philosophy of devotional service. So we know this chapter, chapter number 19, is all about the instructions to Srila Rupa Goswami from Mahaprabhu. Purport Parase Shakti Vividhaiva Shruite, the Supreme Lord has multipotencies which the Lord bestows on his fortunate devotees. The Lord has a special potency by which he spreads the Krishna consciousness movement. This is explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrit Antilila 7.11. Kali Kale Dharma Krishna Nama Sankirtana Krishna Shakti Vina Nahe Tar Pravartana. One cannot spread the holy name of Krishna without being specifically empowered by Lord Krishna. A devotee who receives this power from the Lord must be considered very fortunate. The Krishna consciousness movement is spreading to enlighten people about their real position, their original relationship with Krishna. One requires Krishna's special power in order to be able to do this. People forget their relationship with Krishna and work under the spell of Maya life after life transmigrating from one body to another. This is the process of material existence. The Supreme Lord Shri Krishna 
Personal descends to teach people that their position in the material world is a mistaken one. The Lord again comes as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to induce people to take to Krishna consciousness. The Lord also empowers a special devotee to teach people their constitutional position. So our constitutional position is that we are the eternal servants of the Lord. We are the Nityadas. Verse 115, Krishna Tattva, Bhakti Tattva, Rasa Tattva, Pranata, Sabha Shikhaila Prabhu Bhagavat Siddhanta, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Srila Rupa Goswami the ultimate limit of the truth about Lord Krishna, the truth about devotional service and the truth about transcendental mellows culminating in conjugal love between Radha and Krishna. Finally, he told Rupa Goswami about the ultimate the conclusions of Srimad Bhagavatam. Verse 116 Ramananda Pashe Pashe Yata Siddhanta Shunila Rupe Kripa Kari Taha Sab Sancharila. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught Rupa Goswami all the conclusions he had heard from Ramananda Rai and duly empowered him so that he could understand them. And we know the results. The teachings, among the teachings of Goswamis, Srila Rupa Goswami is the foremost, along with Sanatan, Jiva, Das Raghunath, Das Gopal, and Gopal Raghunath, Raghunath Das, Raghunath uh, Bhatt, and Gopal Bhatt. Verse 117 Shri Rupa Ridaya Rabhu Shakti Sancharila. Sarva Tattva Nirupane Praveen Karila By entering the heart of Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered him to ascertain properly the conclusions of all truths. He made him an experienced devotee whose decisions correctly agreed with the verdicts of the disciples' disciplic succession. The Srila Rupa Goswami was personally empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So how fortunate was Rupa Goswami that after the Guru Parampara, uh, you know, the, the teachings coming all the way from Krishna, all his disciples, one by one after N Brahma, Narad, and by the before the present Gurus, there is always a picture of the six Goswamis. We call them dearly the Shad Goswami Prabhugan. So I'll read the translation again. By entering the heart of Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered him to ascertain properly the conclusions of all truths. He made him an experienced devotee whose decisions correctly agreed with the verdicts of the disciplic succession. Thus, Sri Rupa Goswami was personally empowered by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Purport, the principles of devotional service are not are only apparently under the jurisdiction of material activity. To be rightly guided, one must be personally guided by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This was the case with Srila Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami and the other Acharyas. Verse 118 Shivananda Senera Putra Kavi Karnapura Rupera Milanaswa Granthe Likhya Chena Prachura Prachura is exactly the same word as we read in Hindi profusely. In his book, Chaitanya Chandrode Kavi Karnapura, the son of Shivananda Sen, has elaborately described the meeting between Sri Rupa Goswami and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Verse 119 Kalena Vrindavan Keli Varta Lupteti Tam Khyapaitum Vishya Kripa Mritena Abhichecha Devas Tatraiva Rupam Cha Sanatanam cha. In the course of time, the transcendental news of Krishna's pastime in Vrindavan was almost lost. To enunciate explicitly those transcendental pastimes, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered Srila Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami with the nectar of his mercy to carry out this work in Vrindavan. Purport this verse and the following two verses are from the Act 9, 38, 29, and 30 of Chaitanya Chandrode by Sri Kavi Karnapura. Verse 120 Yaha Praga Eva Priya Guna Ganair Gadha Bado Api Mukto 
ध्यासाद रस इव परो मूर्त एवापि अमूर्त प्रेमाल पेर दृढ़त्र परिश्वंग रंगे प्रयागे तम श्री रूपम समम अनुपम एना अनुज ग्राहा देव From the very beginning, Shri Larupa Goswami was deeply attracted by the transcendental qualities of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Thus, he was permanently relieved from the family life. Shri Shri Larupa Goswami and his younger brother Vallabh was were blessed by Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Although the Lord was transcendently situated in his transcendental eternal form at Prayag, he told Rupa Goswami about transcendental ecstatic love of Krishna. The Lord then embraced him very fondly and bestowed. All his mercy upon him. Verse hundred and twenty-one. Priya swarupe, daita swarupe, prema swarupe, sahaja bhirupe, nijan rupe, prabhur ek rupe, tatan rupe, swavilas rupe. Indeed, Shrila Rupa Goswami, whose dear friend was Swarup Damodar, was the exact replica of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he was very, very dear to the Lord, being the embodiment of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's. Ecstatic love, Rupa Goswami was naturally very beautiful. He very carefully followed the principles enunciated by the Lord, and he was a com- competent person to explain properly the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu expanded his mercy to Sri La Rupa Goswami just so he could render service by writing transcendental literatures. So we know that Krishna, in all his pastimes, he empowers the devotees according to the desh kal patra and sthan verse 122 e mat karanapura likhe sthane sthane prabhu kripa kaila yaiche roop sanatane the characteristics of shila roop goswami have thus been described in various places by the poet kavi karanapur An account has also been given of how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed his causeless mercy upon Sri Larupa Goswami and Sri La Sanatan Goswami. And I think Krishna expects all his devotees, each one of us, should be acting according to the the four things: the desh, kal, patra, and sthan. Verse one hundred and twenty-three. Mahaprabhu ra yatta bada bada. बड़ा बड़ा भक्त मात्र रूप सनातन सबार कृपा गौरव पात्र शिला रूप गोस्वामी एंड सनातन गोस्वामी विद ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑफ लव एंड ऑनर फॉर ऑल द ग्रेट स्टॉलवर्ड डिवोटीज ऑफ श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु वर्ष हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी यदि देशे याय देखी वृंदावन तांड्रे प्रश्न करेना प्रभुरा पारिषद गण If someone returned to his country after seeing Vrindavan, the associates of the Lord would ask him questions. Verse one hundred and twenty-five. Kaha tahan kaiche rahe roop sanatan kaiche rahe kaiche vairagya kaiche bhojan. They would ask those returning from Vrindavan, how are roop and sanatan doing in Vrindavan? What are their activities in the renounced order? How do they manage to eat? These were the questions asked. So, how fortunate were Roop and Sanatan Goswamis that even the associates of Lord would ask the well-being of both the Goswamis. And if I'm not wrong, you should definitely correct, uh, cross-check for yourself. That these six Goswamis are revered by all the sampradayas, all the Vaishnav sampradayas. Equally, verse hundred and twenty-six. Kaiche ashd prahar karena Shri Krishna bhajan tabe prasham siya kahe se bhakt gana. The Lord's associates would also ask, "How is it that Rupa and Sanatan are engaging in devotional service twenty-four hours a day?" At that time, the person who had returned from Vrindavan would pray Shila Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis, and we know the very famous pastime. when it is said that rupa goswami and sanatan goswami when krishna would ask for some salt to be given with their uh, bhoga they would say to lord that lord we will be wasting our time uh, 
we will be taking the time from our writings uh, instead we'll be look when if we'll be going uh, in uh, in our padukari time to people's houses asking for salt god today you're asking for salt tomorrow you'll ask for sweet the day you after you'll ask for something more elaborate so we we just want to give you our minimum bhoga because this is what we will get and this is what we will offer and this is what we will honor so they had uh, kept their uh, needs to the most minimal so that rest of their time was devoted to the lord's service which lord had personally empowered them for verse 127 अनिकेत दुन्हे वने यत वृक्ष गण एक एक वृक्षेरा तले एक एक रात्रि शयन सो नाउ दिस वर्स गोस ऑन टू एक्सप्लेन दिस व्हाट वी वर जस्ट टॉकिंग द ब्रदर्स एक्चुअली हैव नो फिक्स्ड रेजिडेंस दे रिसाइड बिनीथ ट्रीज वन नाइट अंडर वन ट्री एंड द नेक्स्ट नाइट अंडर अनदर वर्स 128 विप्र गृहे स्थूल भिक्षा कहान मधु करी शुष्क रूटी चाना काना किवाय सॉरी चाना चिवाय भोग परिहरी श्री रूप एंड सनातन गोस्वामी बेग अ लिटल फूड फ्रॉम द हाउस ऑफ ब्राह्मण गिविंग अप ऑल काइंड ऑफ मटीरियल एंजॉयमेंट दे टेक ओनली सम ड्राई ब्रेड एंड फ्राइड चिक पीज वर्स वन हंड्रेड एंड मात्र हाते कांथा छिंडा बहिर्वास कृष्ण कथा कृष्ण नाम नर्तन उल्लास दे कैरी ओनली वॉटर पॉट्स एंड दे वेयर टॉन क्विल्स दे ऑलवेज चैन द होली नेम्स ऑफ कृष्ण एंड डिस्कस हिज पास टाइम्स इन हिज इन ग्रेट जुबिलेशन दे ऑल्सो डांस वर्स हंड्रेड थर्टी अष्ट प्रहर कृष्ण भजन चारी दंड शयने नाम संकीर्तने सह नहे कौन दिने they engage almost 24 hours a day in rendering service to the lord they usually sleep only 1 hour and a half and some days when they continuously chant the lord's holy name they do not sleep at all verse 131 kabhu bhakti ras shastra kare likhana chaitanya katha shune kare chaitanya chintana sometimes they write transcendental literatures about devotional service and sometimes they hear about shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and spend their time thinking about the lord verse 132 ek katha shuni mahan ter maha sukh haya chaitanyera kripa yanhe tanhe ki vismaya when the personal associates of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu would hear of the activities of roop and sanatan goswamis they would say what is wonderful for a person who has been granted the lord's mercy purport shila roop goswami and sanatan goswami had no fixed residence they stayed beneath a tree for one day only and wrote huge volumes of transcendental literature they not only wrote books but chanted danced discussed krishna and remembered shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's past times thus they executed devotional service so if somebody asks you the definition of the devotional service this is the perfect definition which prabhupada has given in this purport in vrindavan there are prakrit sahijyas who say that writing books or even touching books is taboo for them devotional service means being relieved from these activities whenever they are asked to hear a recitation of vedic vedic literature they refuse saying what business do we have reading or hearing transcendental literatures they are meant for neophytes they pose themselves as too elevated to exert energy for reading writing and hearing however pure devotees under the guidance of shila rupa goswami reject this sahajya philosophy it is certainly not good to write literature for money or reputation but to write books and publish them for the enlightenment enlightenment of the general populace is real service to the lord that was shri lord bhakti sidan saraswati's opinion and he specifically told his disciples to write books he actually preferred to publish books rather than establish temples temple construction is meant for the general populace and neophyte devotees but the business of advanced and empowered devotees is to write books publish them and distribute them widely According to Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur distributing literature is like playing on a great mridanga consequently we always request members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness to publish as many books as possible and distribute them widely throughout the world by this following in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami and can become a Rupanuga devotee so that's why 
we are also called sometimes Rupanuga devotees because we are in the Gaudiya Vaishnav, Brahma Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya. Verse 133 Chaitanyera Kripa Rupa Likhiya Chena Apane Rasamrita Sindhu Granthera Mangala Charane Shri Rupa Goswami has personally spoken about the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his auspicious introduction to his book Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu 1.1.2. Moving on to verse 134 now. Vridhi yasya pranaya preranaya pravrito aham varak rupo api tasya hareha pada kamalam vande chaitanya devasya. Although I am the lowest of men and have no knowledge, the inspiration to write transcendental literatures about devotional service has been mercifully bestowed upon me. Therefore, I am offering my obeisances at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the Supreme Personality of Godhead who has given me the chance to write these books. So this is Prabhupada showing his humility here in this purport to all of us. 135 verse from chapter 19 now. E mata dasha dina prayage rahiya shirupa shiksha dila shakti Shakti Sanchariya for 10 days Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stayed at Prayag and instructed Rupa Goswami empowering him with the necessary potency purport this is a confirmation of the statement Krishna Shakti Vina Nahe Tara Pravartana unless one is specifically empowered by Supreme Personality of Godhead he cannot spread the Krishna Consciousness Movement an empowered devotee sees and feels himself to be the lowest of men for he knows that Whatever he does is due to the inspiration given by the Lord in the heart. This is confirmed in the Lord by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita 10.10. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam ye namam upayantite. Those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. To be empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one has to qualify himself. This means that one must engage 24 hours a day in the loving devotional service of the Lord. The material position of a devotee doesn't matter because devotional service is not dependent on material considerations. In his earlier life, Srila Rupa Goswami was a government officer and a grihastha. He was not even a brahmachari or sannyasi. He associated with the Malachas and the Yavanas, but because he was always eager to serve, he was a qualified recipient for the Lord's mercy. A sincere devotee can therefore be empowered by the Lord regardless of his situation. In the preceding verse from the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, Shri Rupa Goswami, by the Lord, he further states in the Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu 1.2.187, Iha Yasya Harer Dasya Karmana Manasa Gira Mikhilasva Api Avasthasu Jeevan Muktahasa Uchyate. A person acting in the service of Krishna with his body, mind, and words is a liberated person even in the material world, although he may be engaged in many so called material activities to keep oneself free from the material contamination and attain the lord's favor one must be sincerely eager to render service to the lord this is the only qualification necessary as soon as one is favored by the mercy of the spiritual master and the lord one is immediately given all the power necessary to write books and propagate the krishna consciousness movement without being hampered by material considerations verse 136 Prabhu kahe shuna rupa bhakti rasera lakshana sutra rupe kahi vistarana yai varnana. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, My dear Rupa, please listen to me. It is not possible to describe devotional service completely. Therefore, I am just trying to give you a synopsis of the symptoms of devotional service. Verse 137. Para para shunya gabhira bhakti rasa sindhu tomaye. Chakhaite tar kahi ek bindu. Gabhira is deep. The ocean of the transcendental mellows of devotional service is so big that no one can estimate its length and breadth. However, just to help you taste, I am describing but one drop. Verse 138. Eta brahmanda bhari ananta jiva gana chaurasi laksha yonite karaye brahmana. In this universe, there are limitless living entities in 8.4 million species and all are wandering within this universe. Purport, this is a challenge to so-called scientists and philosophers who presume that there are living entities on this planet only. So-called scientists are going to the moon and they, are, they say there is no life there. This does not tally with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's version. He says that everywhere 
Within the universe, there are unlimited numbers of living entities in 8.4 million different forms. In the Bhagavad Gita 2.24, we find that the living entities are Sarvagata, which means that they can go anywhere. This indicates that there are living entities everywhere. They exist on land, in water, in air, in fire and in ether. Thus, they are living entities in all types of material elements. Since the entire material universe is composed of five elements, earth, water, fire and air and ether, there should there be living why should there be living entities on one planet and not others such a foolish version can never be accepted by vedic students from the vedic literatures we understand that there are living entities on each and every planet regardless of what whether the planet is composed of earth water fire or air these living entities may not have the same forms that are found on this planet but they have different forms composed of different elements. Even on this earth, we can see that the forms of land animals are different from the forms of aquatics. According to the circumstances, living conditions differ, but di undoubtedly there are living entities everywhere. Why should we deny the existence of living entities on this or that planet? Those who have claimed to have gone to the moon have not gone there or else with their imperfect vision they cannot actually perceive the particular type of living entities there. The living entities are described as ananta or unlimited. Nonetheless, they are said to be, they are said to belong to 8.4 million species, as stated in the Vishnu Puran. Jalaja nava lakshanai lakshani sthavara lakshavimshati krimayo rudra sankhya kaha pakshinam dasha lakshanam. Trimashal Lakshani Pashavaha Chatur Lakshani Manusha. There are 900,000 species living in the water. There are also 2 million species. Sorry, there are 900,000 species living in water. There are 2 million species non moving living entities, Stavar, such as trees and plants. There are 1.1 million species of insects and reptiles, and there are 1 million species of birds. As far as quadrupeds are concerned, there are 3 million varieties and there are 400,000 human species. Some of these species may exist on one planet and not on another and in any case within the planets of the universe and even the sun there are living entities. This is the verdict of the Vedic literatures as the Bhagavad Gita 2.20 confirms. Najayate mriyate vakadachi nayam bhutva bhavita vanabhuya ajo nitya shashvato yam purano for the soul there is neither birth nor death at any time he has not come into being does not come into being and will not come into being he is unborn eternal ever existing and primeval he is not slain when the body is slain since the living entities are never annihilated they simply transmigrate from one life form to another thus there is an evolution of forms according to the degree of developed consciousness one experiences different degrees of consciousness in different forms. A dog's consciousness is different from a man's. Even within a species, we find that a father's consciousness is different from his son's and that a child's consciousness is different from a youth's. Just as we find different forms, we find different states of consciousness. When we see different states of consciousness, we may Take it for granted that the bodies are different. In other words, different types of bodies depend on different states of consciousness. This is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 8.6. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam tejante antakalevaram tam tam eveti konte sadatad bhava bhavitaha. One's consciousness at the time of death determines one's type of body in the next life. This is the process of transmigration of the soul. A variety of bodies is already there. We change from one body to another in terms of our consciousness so when we see some hollywood films about the aliens and all that so we know that in our heart that they have taken inspirations from our shastras that there are so many types of human species it's not that just the ones which we see on the earth there is life in other planets like Prabhupada explained in the purport they might be composed of different elements doesn't have to be the same elements what we are composed of earth water air and ether verse number 139 keshagra shateka bhag punaha shatam shakari tar sama sukshma jivera swarupa vichari 
the length and breadth of the living entity is described as one ten thousandth part of the tip of the hair. This is the original subtle nature of the living entity. So this is the size of the soul, one ten thousandth part of the tip of the hair. So any jiva, whether it is humongous in size or whether it is not even seen by the size of the eye, has the same, the soul size is the same, the jiva is the same size. The outer body, the wig, the covering may be of different size. Verse 140. Keshagra shata bhagasya shatamsha sadrishatmakaha jivaha sukshma surupo ayam sankhyaito hi chitta kanaha. If you divide the tip of the hair into 100 parts and then take one of these parts and divide again into 100 parts, that very fine division is the size but one of the numberless, numberless living entities. They are all chit karnas, particles of spirit, not matter. Purport, this is quoted from the commentary on the portion of Srimad Bhagavatam wherein the Vedas personified offer their obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Krishna confirms this statement in the Bhagavad Gita 15.7. Mame Vamsho Jiva Loke Jiv Bhuta Sanatana The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Lord Sri Krishna personally identifies himself with the minute living entities. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Spirit, the Spirit Super Soul, the Spirit Entities are his very minute parts and parcels. Of course, we cannot divide the tip of a hair into each fine particles, but spiritually such small particles can exist. Spiritual strength is so powerful that a mere atomic portion of the spirit can be the biggest brain in the material world. The same spiritual spark is within an ant and within the body of the Brahma. According to his karma, material activity, the spiritual spark attains a certain type of body. Material activities are carried out in goodness, passion and ignorance or in combination of these. According to the mixture of the abodes of material nature, the living entity is awarded a particular type of body. This is the conclusion. Verse 141 Balagra Shata Bhagasya Shata Shatadha Kalpitasya Cha Bhago Jeevahasa Vijnaya Iti Chaha Parashruti. If you divide the tip of the hair into 100 parts and then take one part and divide into another 100, then 10,000th part is the dimension of the living entity. This is the Verdict of the Chief Vedic Mantras, Purport, the first three padas of this verse from Panchadashi Chitradeep 81 are taken from Shweta Shwad Avatar Upanishad 5.9. So if someone asks you where in the Shastras we can see the size of the soul is described, then you can say just please see the Shweta Shwad Avatar Upanishad and exact number also Prabhupada has told us 5.9. Verse 142 Sukshmanam api aham jiva Lord Krishna says Among minute particles I am the living entities Entity purport The living entity is one with and different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead As spirit soul the living entity is one in quality with the Supreme Lord However the Supreme Lord is bigger than the biggest And the living entity is the smallest of the small This quotation is the third pada of a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 11.16.11 Verse 143 Apari Mitta Dhruvas Dhruvas Tanu Brito Yadi Sarva Gatas Tarhi Na Sha Yateti Niyamo Dhruva Netra Tha Ajani Cha Yan Mayam Tad Avimucha Nyantra Bhavet Samam Anujantam Yad Amatam Mat Dushtayaya O Lord, all through the living entities who have accepted material bodies are spiritual and unlimited in number. If they were all pervading there, would be no question of their being under your control. If they are accepted, however, as particles of the eternally existing spiritual entity as part of you, who are the supreme spirit soul, we must conclude that they are always under your control. 
If the living entities are simply satisfied with being identical with you as spiritual particles, then they will be happy being controllers of so many things. The conclusion that the living entities and the Supreme Personality of Godhead are one and the same is a faulty conclusion. It is not a fact. Purport, this verse is also from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.87.30 was spoken by the personified Vedas. Verse 144 Tara Madhya Sthavar Jangam Dui Bheda Jangame Triyak Chala Sthalachara Vibheda The unlimited living entities can be divided into two section, divisions, those that can move and those that cannot move. Among living entities that can move, there are birds, aquatics and animals. Purpa Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is giving clear instructions in, on how the living entities live under different conditions. There are trees, plants and stones that cannot move, but still they must be considered living entities or spiritual sparks. The soul is present in the bodies like those of trees, plants and stones. They are all living entities. Among moving entities such as birds, aquatics and animals, the same spiritual spark is there. As stated herein, there are living entities that can fly, swim and walk. We must also conclude that there are living entities that can move within fire and ether. Living entities have different material bodies composed of earth, water, air, fire and ether. The word Taramadhe means within this universe. The entire material universe is composed of the five material elements. It is not true that the living entities reside only within this planet and not within others. Such a conclusion is completely contradictory to the Vedas as stated in Bhagavad Gita 2.24. Achedyo yam adahiyo yam akledyo shoshya evacha nityah sarva gatah sthanur achalo ayam sanatanah. This individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble and can be neither burned nor dried. He is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable and, and eternally the same. The soul has nothing to do with the material elements and any material element can be cut to pieces, especially earth. As far as the living entity is concerned, however, he can be neither burned or not cut to pieces. He can therefore live within fire. We can conclude that there are also living entities within the sun. Why should living entities be denied this planet or that planet? According to the Vedas, the living entities can live anywhere and everywhere on land, in water, in air and in fire. Whatever the condition, the living entity is unchangeable. That is Thanu. From the statements of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Bhagavad Gita, we are to conclude that the living entities exist everywhere throughout the universes. They are distributed as trees, plants, aquatics, birds, human beings, and so on. So we'll continue our reading from verse 145 from the 19th chapter of the Madhilila of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit next time. Thank you for joining. Hare Krishna.